Drones at Gatwick Airport, something of a controversial subject, isn't it? Well, today we're going to be looking at how one UTM service is already trialing how to open up airspace to drone operators and making drones around Gatwick a more welcome thing. I will also confirm details of my own drone flight within the Gatwick FRZ to capture some unique shots of the airport. So stay tuned. Future integration of drones, manned aviation, automated flight and beyond visual line of sight missions is something we as drone operators hear a lot about, but it's usually discussing how UTM could potentially clip our wings or make it harder to fly our drones. Today, we're going to talk about one exciting trial happening right now at Gatwick Airport to allow drone flights within the usually restricted flight restriction zone to happen through a simple application via an app. Stay tuned for a short interview with Richard Parker, the CEO and founder of Altitude Angel, who are the brains behind this development through their Guardian UTM service. First up, and a quick reminder about the airspace itself and why it is restricted from open drone flights. As every drone user in the UK will hopefully be well aware of by now, airports have a flight restriction zone around them. This is to ensure the safety of manned flights to and from the airport. When you look on mapping tools like Drone Assist, you'll see shapes like this in dark red around airports. They usually look like a London underground station sign, but they can be different shapes depending on proximity to other airfields or number of runways, etc. This flight restriction zone or FRZ consists of three elements, a zone with the same dimensions as the aerodrome traffic zone for that airport. So a two or 2.5 nautical mile radius cylinder around the aerodrome, usually extending 2000 feet above ground level. It's centered on the longest runway. Next, these bars either side here, which are runway protection zones. They're rectangles extending five kilometers from the threshold of each runway. They are one kilometer wide and they extend again up to 2000 feet above. The third area, which can make up an FRZ, is known as additional zones. This is basically where the standard size FRZ will not adequately protect the aerodrome, and it is an important reason why you should check each airport FRZ before you fly, as shapes and sizes can differ. We can only fly within these zones with explicit permission from the air traffic control for the airport, and that usually means we'll need to provide lots of information back and forth via phone calls and emails, and of course, wait a decent amount of time for the process to be completed. That is all fair enough. We need to ensure this particularly sensitive airspace is protected as aircraft are at their most vulnerable when coming into land or taking off. Let me know in the comments if these type of FRZs have stopped you from flying before and if the ability to seek permission digitally and quickly could benefit your hobby or commercial flights. Have you ever attempted to contact an aerodrome or facility to fly within a flight restriction zone? How did it go? I'm keen to hear your experiences on this. Next, we bring in UTM or Unified Traffic Management. This is one of the buzz terms of the industry and hobby at the moment, and it is often discussed as some ideological and often impractical seeming way to bring everything in the sky together, thus enabling the future of automated, beyond visual line of sight, low level airspace use. It is often thought of in terms of the delivery drones of the future and therefore loses a lot of us in terms of interest levels. However, this trial at Gatwick is actually helping drone operators to get clear and simple permissions to operate within the FRZ right now. Let's take a look at the trial and how it works. So many of us use either the Drone Assist or Guardian apps from Altitude Angel. They're all powered by the same awesome map you can find at dronesafetymap.com. And for ease of demonstration, I'll be showing most of the data through the website. As you can see, when we select a random FRZ, it informs you of the restrictions, but also now has an extra box of information relating to UTM connectivity, where if the facility is connected to the Altitude Angel or compatible UTM service, you would be able to submit a digital application to fly in the FRZ. Of course, as this is only a trial at the moment, then only Gatwick Airport will show the facility. But usefully, they've now started listing the contact details for the facility to gain permission the traditional way, which is really handy. Now, if you move the map across to click on Gatwick, you'll see a new symbol on the FRZ information box denoting the airport is UTM ready. Then when you click in, there is a green headline in the UTM connectivity box showing you the facility. Gatwick Airport in this trial is UTM ready 
and can receive digital flight requests. Exciting. Now, as this is a trial, there are actually some safeguards to the process in place. So the permissions are actually sent across via Altitude Angel. Once fully live, these permissions will be fully digital. What I love about this is the certainty. The way the software logs your flight path, area of operation, type of aircraft, and even pilot details. It gives you the confidence that you have ticked the boxes and can proceed with the flight. As you can see on the map, there are a number of permissions live, including some road mapping happening at the northeast area of the FRZ, with an aerial photography mission flying on the 23rd, very close to the southern boundary of the airport. Previously, there were even more missions live, which these screenshots show. At one point, there were more than six active missions live, including roof surveys, drone flights to capture Christmas lights being turned on, and more. One benefit I would point out to all this is visibility. If this trial is rolled out to all active FRZs in the UK, then not only will it make gaining permission for flights easier and simplify the process, but it will also make identifying those flying with ill intent much more simple for authorities to spot as well. A central log of approved flights, which is accessible by public and law enforcement, could be useful in preventing rogue and criminal use of drones in and around flight restriction zones. Now, of course, that is just my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what you see as the benefits and drawbacks of this type of digital permission system. I'm keen to have conversations with you all on actual UTM in the wild, rather than just endless theoretical debates. So get commenting below. As mentioned previously, I sat down with Altitude Angel CEO and founder Richard Parker to discuss the trial and the wider UTM rollout plans from the company. There's also some great news in there for fans of Drone Assist, so stay tuned for that. And after the short interview, I will also be explaining how I am going to fly in the Gatwick FRZ using the Altitude Angel UTM service. Richard, hi, thank you very much for joining us today. I, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Thanks for having me. Really pleased to be here. We're looking at the Gatwick trial, as, as I've been calling it, the whole concept of UTM and actually having things working effectively. What, what for Altitude Angel is the, the goal of this trial? So I think the, the wider goal for us is to ensure that any airport in the country and across Europe and the rest of the world has access to the kind of tools and the kind of platforms that can enable them to welcome more drone traffic into the airspace that they manage. And that's really you know, why we're keen to, to be partnering with Gatwick on, on this trial um, uh, in order to show how this can be done, can be done at scale and can be done safely. Excellent, yes, because it, it is, it is it's, it's obviously an interesting location to choose as well, because of course Gatwick is, when you talk about drones in Gatwick, there is of course a, a, a history there, which, but, but again, one of the reasons for us wanting to run a story on this is actually there's kind of a, 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 full, a full 360 there as well, from the point of view that, you know, drones are at Gatwick, but actually drones can be around airports if it's done properly. One of the, the benefits I've seen is the, the type of flight, um, as we've been showing in the video already today. Being able to prove that you can safely integrate drones in and around FRZs is absolutely key, but actually to improve the communication between drone pilots and those that work in and around the airport and the security services, etc., is also really important. Um, collecting data is equally important for ensuring that you can inform good policy um, and you can kind of define the best kind of rules about where you're perhaps more happy to welcome drones and where you get a little bit more concerned. And, I think, as you said earlier, um, you know, it's just fortuitous that we're actually at Gatwick. It's not by, yes. by design in the sense <laughs> that um, what we're interested in here is being able to provide the airport with intelligence. So if there is something that is perhaps a little bit odd, then they have a good place to start first so that responsible operators don't potentially get caught in a net. It does mean that, as you're saying, if there is a problem, it's it's red flagged instantly, basically. So uh, ironically, potentially having more flights in and around FRZs could actually make the airspace safer. Absolutely, I agree. Um, and actually one of the interesting things is, you know, even before we put kind of the back end system in place at Gatwick, we've seen over the last number of years, thousands of flights in and around the FRZ that have been logged voluntarily by people. That doesn't mean that those people aren't doing the right thing, by the way, or, or, or rather that they're doing the wrong thing just that they're using that system to declare. So having access to that information, should there be something that the airport is concerned about, as you say, immediately allows that kind of cross-checking so that you can eliminate everyone who is there and doing exactly the right thing. And 
if you think about where we all hope the drone industry is going to be going in the future, it's going to result in a much busier airspace. So we really need more intelligence, more data, and, and better access to it. And, and that's absolutely a core capability of the product that we've, we've deployed at Gatwick. Excellent. And one, one, one thing to explain to people as well, actually, is we, we have your brand there, Altitude Angel. And um, we've, we've, we've just run a poll on our community tab to ask people um, which of the, safe, the, the drone safety maps they're using. And of course, as, as, as you pointed out in the comment section yourself, um, two or three of the, the, the top yeah. four were actually all powered by Altitude Angel. And, and, and I, th I, think th I think people um, don't realize that sometimes, that actually the, the, the beloved Drone Assist app uh, is actually an Altitude Angel creation, which you created yeah. on on behalf of Nats originally and have now brought back under your um, um, un, un, under your wing, pun intended. Um, <laughs> Can't avoid the puns in this industry. No, indeed. Anyway. Um, but, but, but the product that people might not be as uh, uh, aware of, of course, is Guardian. Do you have plans um, for the, the, the usability of Guardian UTM to come across to Drone Assist or will there one day be this, this sort of merging of the two products? Yeah, I, I love that question because it's very, very timely for us. Um, as you mentioned, we've now taken you know, Drone Assist back in-house so that we can develop that functionality, really work on the experience and improve the quality. But actually, as a company, we've actually just written to the CAA and explained that we'll be investing just over a million pounds in the next sort of six months um, to really upgrade the user experience in Drone Assist. Um, Drone Assist going forwards is very likely to be the brand that we, we push quite significantly, even internationally. It's traditionally been here just in the UK, um, but then that allows us to focus all of our efforts on really creating one main product um, to give everyone the best possible chance um, of having the best possible experience. So I think the other thing to add to that as well is, um, as, you, as you kind of called out there, the maps in all of the products are exactly the same. So they all pull their information and share their information with um, the Guardian UTM cloud that we have. And that's really, really important because it does mean that we're able to give everyone a really consistent yes. view of the regulations, a view of the data, wherever they are. Um, but what's actually happened in the, in the sort of last 18 months, two years, is that, as you mentioned, Guardian has been the app which has got some of the, the sort of the shinier features than Drone Assist. So, for instance, um, the flight alerts feature, which allows... Um, allows the phone to sort of broadcast your location to us when you tell it to. And we then start monitoring the airspace some distance away from you for aircraft that are perhaps low flying and ignoring everything that isn't low flying or even likely to come close to you. And, you know, our professional users really, really enjoy that feature. Mm -hmm. And actually a lot of hobbyists have discovered it in Guardian. And we'll be bringing that kind of technology plus a whole heap of new features, uh, community based features and social features as well. So we're opening soon um, a consultation to a sort of a, a beta group of people. We've worked a lot with various different communities today, um, but we're really looking forward to, to open that. And perhaps I can come back to your channel at some point and be the first to uh, give your great. viewers the opportunity to participate in our user testing. Yeah, fantastic. And I, I think it's great to hear the Drone Assist brand will live on because I think it, it, it is a, a base platform that people trust. Thank you very much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. And um, we really look forward to seeing uh, what happens with Drone Assist and also uh, the outcome of this trial. Likewise, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you to Richard for taking the time to chat with us and pass the information on to our audience. There will be a follow-up video to this one where I will take you with me to fly in the Gatwick FRZ with my drone with digital permission and gain some awesome drone footage of the airport. So if you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to hear when that video goes live.